Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome back to another Sunday morning with our gather groups. Um, welcome, welcome to the refinery. Today, I want to remind you of a couple of announcements coming up, a couple of events. This coming Friday, August 26th at 7 o'clock at the building, we have Marriage Refine. It's going to be a great time to reconnect with your marriage. To, um, the theme is going to be getting to know um, your spouse. So just please sign up online if you could. Um, also, the following day on the 27th, we have a, um, a gathering out at Holland and Christie's Farm, um, just north of the airport. We're going to, it's four to six, and we're going to be doing um, an ice cream Sunday bar, just a gathering for a couple hours, um, just to be together. You know, it's always good to be together, um, to have a little bit of food. And at this point, we're going to be having ice cream. Um, and so bring your favorite topping. Um, we'll supply all the ice cream. Just bring your favorite toppings there. Okay, let's jump in this morning. Um, you know, last week, if you followed us last week and you were um, in Gather Group last week, um, I talked about um, prayer, about having to set time aside for the Father. Um, and as you continue to um, uh, walk with the Lord to cultivate this place of prayer, this place of setting a time apart for Him and setting a time apart with Him. So today, I want to bring some encouragement to us um, maybe bring some, um, some reflection in, um, you know, as we begin to pray, sometimes we begin to think about people we've invested in. We begin to think about our own personal salvation. We begin to think about our own journeys. And I guess today I just want to simply encourage us um, in the journey that we've begun and who's helped us begin that journey um, and who's going to keep tending to it with us. Um, so if you have your Bibles today, turn in Philippians chapter um, one, <clears throat> we're going to be verses three through six. Um, I'll read it both in the Passion and I'll read it um, in, in the New King James Version. Um, okay. The New King James Version. I thank my God upon every remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine, making requests for you all with joy. For your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now, being confident of this very thing, that he who has begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of Christ Jesus. Okay, the Passion reads this way. My prayers for you are full of praise to God as I give him thanks for you with great joy. I am so grateful for our union and our enduring partnership that began the first time I presented to you the gospel. I pray, this is verse 6, I pray with great faith for you because I am fully convinced that the one who began this glorious work in you will faithfully continue the process of maturing you and will put his finishing touches to it until the unveiling of our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay. <clears throat> now Paul's writing this, um, do you go back above part Paul's writing this to, you know, he's in prison and he's writing this to uh, fellow believers in Philippi who ha he has invested in, um, who has shared the gospel with, um, who have come to Christ. And then the body of Christ continues to grow in that region um, and he's sharing back with them and encouraging them. Um, so I guess from the reflection point today, as we start to think about this, I want you to first of all begin to think about when you first came to Christ, uh, when you first came to know Jesus as your Savior. And when I say it that way, it's <clears throat> there is a point in time when you've been born again if you're walking with the Lord. There's a point in time when you've confessed um, your need for Christ and you've confessed, Father, I am a sinner and I need you. I need to be born again and to be made new, this new creation. And so there's been a point in time when you've done that. And so as you begin to walk in that period of time, you know, some of us have been walking 30, 40, 50 years, maybe 60, 70 years. Um, and so as we walk in that, there's, there's an ebbing and flowing of that, um, of growing with Jesus and walking with Christ. Also, we've invested in people that maybe we're in relationship with today or we're still not in relationship with or no longer. Um, those maybe have already gone, to, gone on to be with the Lord or those that are just not in our sphere of influence. They're not in our relational um, context anymore. And so 
with that, there's something that you have also invested there that's going to continue on. What I want to focus on in this, as we reflect on this, is <clears throat> who's doing the work and you know, where do we draw our confidence from? Where do we draw uh, not only our assurance of salvation, but our assurance that <clears throat> something that <clears throat> pardon me, something that has been has been begun within us. There's something greater than ourselves, than even our efforts that are partnering with us in order to draw us up um, into the fullness of the kingdom, the fullness of who God's made us to be. So look at verse 6. And this is a, it's a simple verse. It's a verse I've got memorized because I continue to encourage myself with it um, as I walk with the Lord. Um, I've been pastoring, Novel and I have been pastoring for 20 plus years. And so through those 20 years, we've had a lot of relationships and a lot of people we've um, poured into, a lot of people we've seen come to Jesus, um, people we've discipled, people we're no longer um, in close relationship with. But we have to know that our relationships and things that we've invested in people, those are the things that will continue to grow. Those things that have been invested in people because of what God has used us for those things will always continue to grow. Those things are never left. Um, they're not left behind when relationships shift. That's why it's important um, that, that we're walking with one another, not only in our gather groups, but our, our neighbors, the people we work with. It's important that with that, that we are investing in other people, that we are always making a deposit, making a deposit of encouragement, making a deposit of hope making a deposit of, of um, just honor, making a deposit of, of, hey, I see you're struggling with this. Can, can, can we pray together? I see this is happening in your life. Can we sit and talk about this? And so all these investments is what Paul's talking about here is that he's at a far, he's kind of disconnected from all of them. He's writing this letter and He's, draw, he's drawing some confidence here and some reflection as he's doing it. So look again in verse 3. I'll go ahead and just do it straight out of the Passion. He says, My prayers are for, are for you, for you are full of praise to God as I give Him thanks for you with great joy. And so even as I pray for us as a body and as maybe you pray for one another, we should pray it like in full joy. We should, just, we could be, should continue to be pressing in, um, having joy upon our lips, having um, praise, knowing that God is doing something. Because as we get through this, we're going to find that God is the player that's continually present, that's working things out. And we're simply partnering um, with Him in this process. He says, I'm so grateful for our union in other words, the fact that we're joined together in the gospel, that we continue to walk together, and our enduring partnership that began the first time I presented to you the gospel. And so in this, <clears throat> the gospel has been presented, and Paul's walking with him. There's something that's been birthed, and then he continues to partner with him and walk with him. Um, it's kind of like the relationships we have um, in India and the relationships we have maybe in Cuba, in Honduras, uh, Wales, all these partnerships are long-term partnerships that have been going on. It, it, some of the longer ones, 15 years. Some of the shorter ones, maybe only five to eight years. But these are partnerships that we continue to invest in because these are people that are part of our body and they're part of an extension of who we are. I mean, so as Paul's praying here, he's, he's reminding that there is an enduring partnership, and our enduring partnership that began the first time that I presented the gospel to you. Know this, that as you invest in people in the gospel, when I say in the gospel, when you invest in people, and you invest in their life because the motivation is that there's something living in you, the Jesus in you, the Spirit in you, it, you're investing in others because we've been called to walk together, one to another. And just know that, that there's a partnership that, if you continue to pray about it and cultivate it, it's, it'll, it, it will endure to the end. In other words, when we're in heaven, the investment that you invest in people today here on this, in this place, those will be partnerships that will endure to the end, and there will be an investment that comes out the other side. And so we go to verse 6. 
And Paul says this, he says, I pray with great faith for you because I'm fully convinced that the one who began this glorious work in you will faithfully continue the process of maturing you and will put his finishing touches to it until the unveiling of our Lord Jesus. If you read it in the New King James, it's being confident of this very thing, that he who has begun a good work will complete it until the day of Christ Jesus. So, if you break that verse apart, there's so much encouragement there. It says, if you go back to the Passion, it says, I pray for you with great faith for you, because I'm fully convinced that the one who began this glorious work in you will faithfully continue the process of maturing you. This is where I want to encourage us today. There's been those that we've invested in, we've invested the gospel in, we may be... Even in our children, we've invested different things. Um, and we, our confidence cannot be continually in our efforts and in what we're doing for them or in our lack of efforts or even our absence of efforts. Our confidence has to be in the one who began the work. My confidence has to be in the fact that there is a, there's the Holy Spirit is working within deposits that have been made and that I'm confident as I pray, Father, I'm confident that the thing that you've begun in this person, you will continue it. And as I have opportunity, I will water that. As I have opportunity, I will be in relationship with that. But I am confident that you have begun a work and that work that you will help bring to completion. It doesn't mean that we're passive in this process. Even in our, in our own salvation, as we're working out our salvation and walking out in maturity, but what it does mean is that I have confidence that there's some, that Jesus is working in me and through me to complete all that he has for me. So there's not a passive place, but there's a place of partnership. And as somebody who's been pastoring for many, many years, we see things, we, I, I see people come and go in closer relationships I see, um, I've seen things um, that are fresh and new, and it's usually the fresh and new thing that's easier to take a hold of. But we have to have confidence in something even beyond our, uh, we have to have confidence in something beyond what we can see. We can have confidence in that which is not seen. The confidence that Moses had, if you go to Hebrews 11, the confidence that Moses had when he says, you know, he did not worry about um, the Pharaoh, because he was persuaded by the thing greater by the thing that he could not see. Let me flip over and I'll give you exactly that verse. Um, and so there's a confidence that he comes up with here that he walks in because he's seen God and he's walked with the Lord and he knows him. Hebrews 11. Verse 27 by faith, he forsook Egypt. In other words, he left everything he knew, um, everything he had grown up in, um, all of his provision, all of the safety of Egypt, Egypt being at the top of the food chain at that point in the world. There, he left Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. So he endured by seeing God. And so part of this is... Uh, as I'm encouraging us today on reflection is knowing that there's an enduring thing that's happening that God has begun that He will continue to be faithful to complete. Um, and so for us, maybe take some encouragement right now. Let these words wash over you. Even as you pray for one another, listen to this. I pray with great faith for you because I am fully convinced. Now, I'm fully convinced and so maybe part of that today is that we have to get fully convinced that the one who's begun this glorious work in you will faithfully continue the process of maturing you and will put his finishing touches on it until the unveiling of our Lord Jesus Christ. We have to be convinced. Like this is where enduring faith, this is where the enduring part comes into our lives um, because we've, if you've walked in your faith long enough, you've seen people come and go in relationships. You've seen things come and go in the relational circles you've been in. Um, but as we pray, right, go back to last week, as we pray and set time apart, 
this can be a prayer right here. We pray. You begin to pray for those around you that have already begun their walk with Jesus. And so you go, Father, I am convinced. Father, I know that I'm not present. I'm not able to have any, any, any physical touch on to the process here, Father, but I am con fully convinced that Father says that the one, and this is the one, this is God, the God who, who has begun a glorious work will faithfully continue this process. Father, I'm convinced that you're going to continue to mature this person and walk this person out, uh, bring people into their life um, to help shape them. Um, if I'm supposed to be back in the life, put me back there. But I'm convinced that you're going to continue to work that out. And when he says good work here, he's, he's, talking, he's kind of referring to the same thing that when God created everything back in Genesis 1, right? He created heaven, the earth, the birds, um, the sun, the moon. And as he created everything, he said it's good. And when he created man, he said it was very good. And so the same new creation work that he says, he says, I am convinced that one who's begun this glorious work. In other words, when we said yes to Jesus, he began this glorious work of, this, of revealing this new creation that we have become, right? Any man is in Christ, 2 Corinthians 5, 10, 17. He's a new creation. Behold, the old is gone and all has been made new. He's revealing this new good thing that, that he's begun. And he's also saying, that Paul's saying, that I know that he'll be faithful to continue the process of maturity. In other words, the Lord's not going to leave us. He's not going to forsake us. He's always going to be there working with us. And so the reflection of that, that will continue to happen until the day of Christ. In other words, all the days of my life, Paul is saying that God is going to help mature us. The Spirit of the Lord is going to be there working with us, maturing us, and shaping us. See, this is where our hope has to come from. This is where our confidence has to come from and our faith as we're walking this out. I mean, I find myself at 55 um, this year looking back and reflecting and evaluating on relationships, evaluating on times, um, different churches, different organizations I've been a part of, looking at these things and, and just asking questions. And I find myself going back and going, Lord, I know you began something in me here. I know you began something in this person there. Um, Father, I know that we're not together anymore, but Father, I know that you're doing something there. So Lord, I say yes and amen. I'm convinced that you're going to continue to work something out to your glory there. And so that there's a great um, reunion happening in heaven based on the deposits that we've made in other people. That's why the significance of even us as we're doing church presently right now in gather groups, it's not the most convenient thing. It's not the most um, convenient process. But as we're gathering, this is the fruit of that. The fruit of it is that we're making deposits in one another because we're getting to know one another relationally. We're allowing the Spirit of the Lord to um, direct us and, and we're praying for one another. As we're doing that together as a body, not only on our first Sundays, but also in our worship gatherings, but also in our gather groups, we're cultivating and depositing within one another things that are eternal. There are things that are being built up that we're partnering with the Father in, in these settings that are eternal um, and that help mature us, that help continue to reveal, and this is what it says at the end, and we'll put the finishing touches on us until the unveiling of God, until we're glorified with Him. There's a glory that's going to continue to be revealed within us and manifested because we continue to ensure, endure, and mature together. That's why it's important to continually be together and walk together, but not only that, but to involve others in your walk and your journey because the gospel that's within us um, is eternal. And the one that's helping us, the Father Himself, His Son Jesus, the Spirit of the Lord, these three, as they help us move through this, they're faithful. They're going to continue. They're, and, and Paul says, I'm convinced of this. They're not going anywhere. They're going to continue to be there. They're going to continue to work things out within us. So today, um, what I want us to maybe reflect on is May we just, we simply pray for one another. We pray for the work that's begun in us. May we pray for those um, that we know there's been a work begun in them, 
but that it needs to be encouraged. And it needs to be um, watered a, a little bit. It needs to be cultivated. Or maybe there's th those we need, we know that need to have that work begun in them that's not begun yet. Um, and so we begin to press in in prayer together um, today for that. So I'm going to read this verse again for you. I'm going to read these verses again, three through six. <clears throat> and then I want us to, I want you to push in on this in your gather groups and begin to open this up. All right, so in the Passion, verse 3 through 6, My prayers for you are full of praise to God, as I give Him thanks for you with great joy. I'm so grateful for our union and our enduring partnership that began the first time I presented to you the gospel. I pray with great faith for you, because I'm fully convinced that the one who began this glorious work in you will faithfully continue the process of maturing you and will put his finishing touches to it until the unveiling of our Lord Jesus Christ. So today in our groups, um, I would like for you guys to chew this out. Give thanksgiving, look at one another and go like, Father, thankful that thank you, Lord, that we're walking with one another, that we have relationship with one another. I'm confident that the work you've begun in this person beside me, you're going to continue it. And you're going to continue this work within me. Thank you, Father. And then we go a circle further than that. We go, okay, we have this circle. And we go circle those who are not present <clears throat> that maybe um, are fellowshipping somewhere else or at other, um, they're in other states or even other countries. We begin to extend that sphere out. And go, Father, I'm confident and faithful that you're going to continue working there, Lord. We just bless that. And then we go even a sphere out from that. Lord, there are people that are in our relational spheres that don't know you. They don't know who you are. They don't know anything about this good work. They don't even know uh, about how good you are. And so, Father, we pray for them for a good work to, to begin there um, so that we can partner with that to continue. Okay, so um, chew on that today and um, let's continue to press in on this in prayer because there is a harvest out there um, that is waiting um, to be brought in. Have a great week. Uh, see you next week.